this was congested. The Rotterdam ring roads are not able to manage all the trucks being there, waiting times, endless hours are being there. And the normal waterway was there, and it was the easiest point to reach with best water conditions for the Rhine River to go to the area. And finally, it's also a cheap process because put it on the barge, it's pretty cheap. And on the end, our decisions are always made by pricing, not by the environment. And this we should not forget if we discuss it on this case. I have a good alternative to Rotterdam from the wine front. That's much better. Thank you very much. <laughs> I think that we are fully agree with you. But still, it's a matter of the balance, how much money you can invest and what you should invest at first. This is a question. Uh, I would never oppose to have a high efficiency on the Vistula River and connection with the Danuba and further on in Europe. But that's, that's, I think that's still the future to come. Thank you. I think uh, we should stop now. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes, uh, let's look now at the another uh, point of view. I would like to welcome now uh, Dominic Lambda, who is the Business Development Manager at DCT Gdańsk. So a close uh, neighbor and a friend of BCT, but also a, a competitor. And we will listen to the presentation entitled The Terminal Operator and its uh, Land Site Connection as a part of the Global Chain Solutions. Yes, uh, good morning ladies and gentlemen. First of all, thank you very much for inviting me here to speak. Uh, second of all, uh, that's very much true. Uh, Mr. Mr. Chabowski and us, so DCT, BCT and GCT, we are fierce competitors whenever we talk about business, but there are also greater things that we have to take into account. And those things, we believe we can work together, like uh, infrastructure or like any other development that will have the Polish ports and Polish economy. So, um, of course, uh, I must say that today I'm, uh, I'm under tremendous pressure. Um, I have been, uh, well, my speech has been mentioned by our CEO, Mr. Boris Benson, two days ago, and yesterday by Jean-Jacques, uh, which means that uh, the pressure built was, was quite high. And I also know that there's another pressure, which means the coffee break, which is in 20 minutes, so I should be quite fast. And that's what I'm trying to do. Um, of course, the shoes that I have to fit, uh, I mean, Jean-Jacques, uh, they are quite big uh, shoes. Uh, it's not because that he's two meters tall, but uh, it's just uh, the 36 years of experience. So, without any further ado, let me just present you the, the, the theme. Uh, moving on, of course, this has not been taken in Poland. This has not been taken in, 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 in Europe yet. So. As you see, uh, this is one of the one of the cargo trains in in, in US. Uh, as we all know, in the United States and in Russia, everything is big, so the trains are no different. Uh, those trains can go up to uh, one kilometer, and they are double deckers, which means that uh, this is a very very efficient way of, of transporting goods. Um, yesterday, uh, JJ was discussing a lot about the shipping industry. Uh, two days ago, uh, our CEO Boris Wenzel was also talking a lot about the macroeconomics. So I will just skip this part because I'm pretty sure you all know that we are in a, in a good place in, in Europe, in the Central East uh, 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 Europe, which means that we are growing and the perspectives are good. Moving on, uh, what would be the context of uh, what I would like to present to you is, of course, container terminal as a hyperlink. link. The bringing shipping lines and cargo owners together, the competitiveness of inland transportation modes, short haul and DCL solutions, and long haul solutions, as well as uh, avoiding the bottlenecks. So, this is, uh, this is what I'll try to uh, show in the next 20 minutes. Uh, moving on, of course, the terminal uh, as a vital link in global logistics chain. Of course, as you can see on the graph, this is the graph representing the, the costs, the total costs of delivery uh, from Far East uh, to uh, Rotterdam uh, or to Warsaw directly via uh, Rotterdam, Hamburg, Rotterdam. <coughs> and uh, regardless of the point of entry, as you can see, the yellow bar is quite insignificant. It's quite small. 
and this is the stevedoring cost. So those are all the costs spread on the terminal, uh, uh, on stevedores, right, on handling charges. All the rest, the green bar is the inner transportation, and the, uh, the red one is the deep sea or the sea freight costs. So, taking into uh, perspective the costs, we are not a significant player. But taking into, uh, into account our role in the logistical chain, I presume we are. It's just, uh, it's just about efficiency, it's just about giving the best service in order to be part of the chain of logistics. Um, the terminal, as, as, as we see it, may take three strategies. One of them is being a partner, which is to stimulate the, the growth, to be a good place to do business and to, to uh, act as, I would say, as a dating uh, website. Which means uh, we combine the cargo owners, the shipping lines, and all the people interested and all the entities interested uh, to, to do good business together and to give them a very good conditions to do so. The next one is the player, or we can say payer, uh, which is the terminal is investing a lot of money to start the intermodal connections. Uh, this strategy requires a lot of funding. This strategy requires setting up own block trains, setting up their own intermodal uh, uh, terminals. The strategy C is the prayer. The strategy C means that basically it's, it's just a praying to get some business. And it's not uh, moving ahead, it's just a passive, being just a passive uh, 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 operator and doing not much to attract the, the cargo. Of course, uh, meaning partners, uh, partner strategy is, uh, is all about a lot of effort. It's a lot of expertise that has to be involved from all the sides. But uh, it lets the terminal to remain neutral for the market. It is cost efficient because you don't have to spend lots of money to, uh, to, uh, to build terminals, to build uh, railway connections. It also builds closer relations between the terminal and the stakeholders, being, of course, shipping lines, being rail operators, being trucking companies, being freight forwarders and logistic operators, being major accounts, inland terminals and authorities. If this all works together, this is a very a good recipe for success. Uh, of course, the terminal role is to facilitate and create a competitive advantage, fitting the supply chain solutions by providing excellent business conditions highest levels of service at competitive price to the customers. Moving on, uh, this matrix of course can be twisted and turned. It all depends on who is presenting this. So let me present uh, how I see it. Uh, the mode of transport, of course we have uh, three major modes of transport, which is the rail, road <laughs> and inland navigation. Of course for Poland, the inland navigation, as it was mentioned by Mr. Krzysztof, is um, is not existing yet in terms of container business. But uh, I do believe this is a song of, uh, of future and uh, it will develop. Uh, taking into account the distances, this is, this is the round trip. Uh, of course the railway in terms, of the, in terms of, the, of the cost is one of the most efficient ones and in terms of the time, of course, uh, it's also efficient in terms of everything that is above to 350 uh, a kilometers round trip. Um, road, of course, is, is very flexible. It is, uh, it is fast, of course. The inland navigation is not fast, but it's very cost effective. Um, now, taking into account uh, all those modes of transport, it doesn't mean that one of them is the only one. It means that the terminals should be able to provide a comprehensive solution. So all of the railway, road, and inland navigation, where it fits. This is, the, uh, this is a, a map, uh, of course this is the theoretical simulation, uh, again you may twist it and turn it depending on, this, on the infrastructure which is given uh, and the conditions, but in general of course if we are talking about 12 hours that you have to do a round trip, uh, the truck wins. When the rail is being loaded the truck is already out of the gate and it goes to the final destination and it goes back. Uh, railway is starting. Of course, inland navigation is still by the key. 
when you are talking about a, a, a longer hole, which is 72 hours long trip, then of course the situation is, is much different. Then we are talking about the rail being the fastest. So, as I said before, the trucking, is it the, the big bad truck? To be honest, I have been traveling a lot and I've been using our roads a lot, but I have never seen such a truck. But of course, that's, uh, that's one of the, uh, I would say, the, the common uh, understanding of the trucking. It's bad, it's big, it's consuming a lot of energy. Uh, what I'm trying to say, it's, 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 it doesn't have to be like this. First of all, as I was saying, it's all about the complementarity of the services. For some distances, you can't use only rail or you can't use only inland navigation, you have to use trucks. This is the most competitive mode of transport for short distances, up to 350 kilometers approximately. Now, uh, as Mr. Christoph from BCT was also mentioning, uh, the, the intermodal uh, split is, is growing. So there's much more dog trains than used to be, but still, trucking is the major mode of transport in both ports. Uh, network, of course, of paved intercity highways provides easy access to final destinations. That is true. So this is all about the flexibility that the truck can give. Of course, the, uh, the competitiveness is very much dependent on oil prices, road taxation, and depreciation. Now, moving to, a, uh, to also another solution, which is something that is truly unique. Um, I would like to tell you a bit about the port center logistics. And of course, it sounds very uh, fashionable, but what it just means is just bringing the container terminal and a logistics center together. It's all about this. It's the synergy fact that you can gain just by having a, a container terminal close to a logistics center. Um, within the logistical center, uh, what you can do, you can do almost everything with the container. You can, you can have a depot, you can have stuffing and stuffing of cargo, cargo upgrade, warehousing, office facilities, whatever is needed for the customers. Um, as you know, uh, company Goodman was awarded with 108 hectares of land just close by to DCT Gdansk and now we are in the middle of developing the initial phase of the of logistic, uh, logistic uh, center close by. Those are the, uh, the uh, uh, pictures. At the moment the pictures are just made in, uh, in, uh, in Photoshop but I'm pretty sure that next time we meet I will be able to present you with some more, some more warehousing and uh, uh, taking also the pictures of the warehousing taken in real life. So uh, this is one of the things which is very exciting. Why is it exciting? It is exciting because this is saving a lot of cost and it's saving a lot of, uh, a lot of time. Um, looking into a traditional good circulation process, this is the distribution center. Let's say um, a big retailer importing uh, goods from Paris. Let's assume Apollo. Uh, what happens is that uh, most of the production of the apparel is coming from, the, from, from China, as you could see yesterday from JJ's presentation. Now, it arrives to dance on the most efficient way of transport, which is the biggest vessels uh, afloat, 15.5 thousand TU uh, vessels from last time. Um, other carriers are also gearing up to build the same capacity. Uh, what it means is that arriving to dance closest to the final location is very cheap. Then, of course, uh, taking into account the upper business and distribution, normally it would go to a distribution center in the south of Poland, then it would be, the container would be unstuffed, then the, uh, the delivery of the trucks would go again, maybe to Dansk, to Szczecin, to Poznan. Why not do it all in the port of Dansk? Why not do it just to buy on the other side of the fence? Actually, there will be no fence because it's going to be a technical road connecting us. Um, the port center logistics concept, of course, as you can see, this is much simpler. So everything that happens happens in the port area. Then directly the delivery of the trucks goes to, uh, say, to the shop in Belarus or shop in Belarus. And that's all about. But is it truly all about? Actually, you can do much more. Because what you can do is also have a light manufacturing model, which means you can have an assembly plant. This would be very interesting for the automotive and uh, electronics sectors. Why? 
Because currently, again, the vessels going from the Far East, from Korea or from China, take the parts which are uh, loaded in containers, they arrive to Donsk, then they go to the south of Poland. It's, I mean, from the parts you can see a, a nice plasma screen then. Of course, the plasma screen uh, is being put in a, in, a, in a cartoon box. It goes in a container, travels back again to Donsk, then it's loaded on the feeder, and then it goes to, let's say, to Russia. Again, why not do it in Donsk? This is, of course, the, uh, the main advantage would be to have a customs-free zone and a special economy zone. This is one of the things that would be very interesting we know, for customers. And of course, as you can see, we are putting the Akita to St. Petersburg, but also a rail to Moscow. Actually, the picture shows the electrified rail, which may not be true, but this is just a simplification of the ADM. Okay, um, now moving on to uh, long-haul solutions and implications on growing petrol price. I mean, most of us are driving cars, and most of us are just uh, faced with a shock whenever we go into the counter desk after filling the petrol to our cars. Um, to be honest, uh, I used to be uh, filling up my car with 300 lot, now it's 400, and I'm just wondering what's going to happen next. But it just proves that uh, the, 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 the oil prices are going up to the roof, which has a very significant effect on the, on the, on the truck transport. The prices from October 2009 up to now almost grew by 31%. At the same time, the rail transport, which is using mostly the electrified routes in Poland, has grown only 8.4%. It just proves that the competitiveness of the rail is increasing. Not to mention, of course, the, the latest tax, uh, amount tax, and, uh, and truly very, very low truckload prices. They have to go to a sustainable level, I guess. Um, of course, JD yesterday and Boris uh, presented DCT, so I couldn't just resist on just showing you one slide, which is, uh, which is about the, the intermodal connections by DCT. Yes, we can serve the, the, the longest trains which are allowed on both trucks. That's true. Uh, yes, we have seven operational windows a day, and uh, we work 24-7, of course, as our colleagues in the too. The local motors, of course, are provided by Lotus Group, and the uh, Norton Board, and PKP Cargo. But the, the rail operators are CTL, PCC, PKP Cargo, Cargo Spet, Spetcon. So all of those partners that are mm -hmm. specialized in the, in, the, in the rail business are also called in the city. Um, the marshalling yard is quite close. We are serving more than 30 block trains a week. Um, and one of, the, one of the new services which was established is uh, the Maersk Amber Express. And now we know that there's going to be also a new Maersk Baltic Express, linking Gdansk to the locations in the south. And also, uh, and also uh, it is a perfect, I would say, example of partnership, which is shipping line which is the rail operators, CTL and product, which is the inland terminal, and which is the sea terminal. Of course, we are very happy to be a facilitator of such a, of such a product, and we look for more. All right, so, you've seen uh, from the presentations in the past uh, a couple of days, uh, all the going up and down arrows, uh, left and right, and, uh, and uh, all the directions. Well, we are just sticking to the right and to the, to, to the down or south and east. This is where we see the market. And the presentation of, uh, that was shown two days ago was showing that we are in C, we are in a region of 300 million people. So this is a huge internet which we can serve. But what we plan to do is, of course, uh, we are of course looking in the south, as much as colleagues from BCT and GCT are looking. Uh, we are also looking to the east, as all the colleagues from the Baltic states are, are, are looking. Um, why do we believe we have a highest chance of establishing this product? Because the biggest vessels are going to Gdansk, and this is the most eastward location where all the biggest vessels can go. Just to take a, a close, uh, closer look at one of, the, one of the ideas and examples of the services that may be soon introduced, is the, uh, is the I would say, uh, Russian Express, 
Uh, but of course, I wouldn't like to steal the name from, uh, from colleagues from PCC who call it Moscow Express. So let me say the example based on, the, on how to deliver the cargo efficiently to, to Russian capital of Moscow. First of all, currently, of course, the, the, the biggest vessels coming to Dansk, and then the containers are being loaded on feeder vessels as it also used to be in the past with Hamburg, Bremerhaven and all the North European hubs. Now it's being done in Dansk, but still it is a feeder bag and still the feeder has to wait during the winter time in convoys or sometimes it cannot call because of the harsh winter conditions. Um, of course, what we are talking about as well is the transit time, which for some customers is very important. Uh, of course, what you can also say is the higher frequency, because the feeder you can have one, two, three a week. With rail, you can have as much as you want, as much as you can do, as much as you can squeeze on your rail table. <laughs> Taking this into account, this seems to be a very viable option, an interesting option, as we can see from the market, uh, from our customers. Just, uh, just as a reminder, um, two years ago, Polish ports had not been used by any of the of the customers close by in, in, in Russia, in Ukraine, Belarus. We have not seen much transit traffic. It was just one-offs. Now, what we can say after two years, we have many customers from Ukraine, from Russia, from Kaliningrad region, from Belarus, and this is exciting. That's why we believe that this plan will work. Of course, uh, I'm, this time round, I will, I'm also referring to, to, to Mr. Schuster from BCT and about barging. Uh, yes, I believe this is the song of the future. Whether it will be a great song or whether it will be a heavy song, it depends about funding, of course. But having experiences from the from the uh, Antwerp or Rotterdam, I think this is a concept to be looked at. Of course, the, uh, the, the four main potential barging corridors that we see are first of all the barging between the ports of Gdansk, Gdynia and also Elbow. The second is serving Kaliningrad. This waterway is bargeable, you can use it already. The Vistula River up to Warsaw, I fully agree with Mr. Szymborski, that this will be a great asset for all the ports. Of course, once it's chargeable. Uh, at the moment, uh, we know that the Vistula River is not yet made uh, or, or prepared for barging. But we hope that in the future, as soon as the rail and the roads are built and done, we could also see some movement in this area. Now, I've showed you all the exciting stuff. And you can say, great, but um, how are you going to handle this? Of course, we, as a management of BCT, we know that this doesn't come at no price. So we have to invest money. Same as our colleagues from Dinia, same as our colleagues from the Baltic States. We are all investing money just to give a very good offer to competitive product by our ports. So uh, this year we started already the, the, uh, the project which would double the rail handling capacity on our terminal. And next year, we would quadruple the current capacity of our terminal. Exactly just to fit all those trains and exciting stuff that I've showed you just a, a couple of seconds ago. And this slide could be copy-pasted from BCT's presentation. And this is why I'm saying that we, of course, are competitors, and there, is, uh, there should be no doubt about it, but we should work for greater good which is good of the Polish ports. Um, of course, the rail is being modernized. Um, whoever took a rail from Gdansk to Warsaw knows uh, what I'm talking about. Currently, I think it's what, like seven, uh, nine hours. So we can just almost get, uh, get lost in this trip and, uh, and turn back in time. But still, in two years, it's going to be quite well. It's going to be three to four hours. It's perfect. Uh, the road, of course. Uh, the road now to Tolony is very nice. It's fast. Tolony is just in a, it's like 20 percent of where we could go. So there's still a lot of things that has to be done. Um, we look 
very anxiously and, uh, and with a big hopes for our government also to, to start uh, and finishing the, pro the projects that were given in terms of the A1 as uh, an S5 expressways. I hope um, I was quite brief and the coffee and cookies are waiting for us. Um, so, as I said, I mean, exciting challenges ahead of us in 2012. Of course, for more information, please refer to our website or come and see us next time on the transport week. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the inland transport. 
So I think that it all depends. It should be a mix, to be honest. Um, of course, uh, uh, we as a terminal, we don't see ourselves as a rail operator. We don't see ourselves as a, as a, as a um, logistics operator. We are just creating conditions. Uh, so we are not uh, in a position to steal any customers. We are just providing a very good environment for business to grow. Um, the shipping lines, of course, uh, at the moment the situation is, it, is quite harsh. Um, the, the, the rates are very low and uh, almost, well, I, I, I don't believe that every shipping line now is in the red. Uh, still, uh, there are different ways of, of getting out of this trouble. Some of them are, uh, uh, let's say, uh, um, introducing GRIs quite, uh, quite high. Some of them are doing it in two steps, three steps. Some of them are working closely with their, as you say, with their customers. Some of them are trying to win the customers. So, Fritri, just to reassure you, uh, last year we conducted a survey in the Benelux countries and the shippers, 68% of the shippers, at least 68% of shippers, are still using exclusively freight forwarders and logistics providers. So, no worries, take care. More questions to the meeting. If not, I think I think we have to repeat the applause for the meeting. Thank you very much. Thank you. I to say it was a good start of today. Uh, the, 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 the third day is, is quite hard to start, but we had a very interesting uh, speeches in the morning. So I think we deserve for the coffee break. Thanks to the speakers. Coffee break. Uh, we meet again at uh, eleven thirty.